Hey what's up my name is Ange, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be going over my January wrap up and my February TBR. I've read seven books in January which is kind of a shock for me. I was kind of just trying to read about like five or six. I had a goal of 80 for the year and I honestly shocked myself that I read seven books this month because I didn't think that I was going to be able to. Starting off I read Lovely Farms by BK Borson. This was my December book club read so that video is posted. This one I kind of just I'm counting it because I finish it in January, but I didn't start and finish it in January. This one was about Stella Bloom. She owns a Christmas tree farm and she's entering in this contest. And on her application, she lied and she said that she owns this Christmas tree farm with her boyfriend. However, she doesn't have a boyfriend, so she's fake dating her best friend, Luca. I ended up liking this one a lot more than I originally did. So in the beginning, it was very slow, but the ending, I thought it was super cute and I liked their chemistry and I loved Luca. If you're looking for a more in-depth kind of review on that book you can go check out that video I will link it down below for you that's where my friends and I kind of talked about absolutely everything that we had a lot of notes for this and we kind of just had a very big open discussion about this book next book that I read was if he had been with me by Laura Nolan this was my January book club read I ended up rating this one four stars. This one was about Autumn and Finn. They used to be inseparable, but then something changed, or they changed. Now they do their best to ignore each other. Autumn has her boyfriend, Jamie, and her close-knit group of friends, and Finn has become that boy at school. So again, this was our January book club read, so I don't want to get too far into it, but I ended up rating this one four stars. This one took me a very, very long time to rate because I just didn't know what to think. And if you read this book, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but Stay tuned for that January book club read because I think that this one is just going to be a very interesting one. I have so much to say about this book that it's insane. I can't wait to talk about it with Jess and Cam, so stay tuned for this. But this one did take a very, very long time for me to rate. I'm still thinking about this book almost daily. It's insane. I, and I did pre-order the next book. It'll be here. I believe that it's February 6th, so I'm super excited for that. I was not expecting this to take such a big toll on me, but it was amazing. If you haven't read it, you need to go read it, like, immediately. Next, I read Brothers Hawthorne by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This was the... Is it technically part of the Inheritance Game series, or is it just, like, a continuation of the Inheritance Games kind of world? But this one was uh, Grayson and Jameson Hawthorne, so this one was in both of their point of views. I ended up reading this one. I think you saw it in a reading... Yes, read with me for the week. This book was in there. I ended up rating this book 3.5 stars. I really wasn't feeling it as much as I was feeling all the enough, all the other Inheritance Games books. I flew through the Inheritance Games books. I absolutely love them. I loved every second of it. I couldn't get enough. But in the beginning, this one was very, very slow for me. I was more interested in Grayson's story in the beginning and then... Or no, 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 no. Switch. I was more interested in Jameson's story in the beginning and kind of like whatever about Grayson's and then I completely switched and felt the opposite way. I wish that they had gotten together sooner if that makes sense. I just feel like they were like it was two different stories like I feel like maybe we could have split this up but then I don't know that was just that's my thought for it was maybe we could have had Grayson's story and then James's story in like an additional book and know that they were running on the same timelines, if that makes any sense. I really, I love Grayson, I love Jameson, and I'm excited for The Grandest Game. Next, I read the third book in the Kings of Sin series called King of Greed by Anna Wong. I also read this in that read with me for a week. It was like a realistic and spoiler-free reading vlog. This book was, I think I rated this four, four and a half stars. Let me look. I rated this one four stars, okay? Anna Wong, what did you put in this book? because this book was incredible. This one was about Dominic Davenport and he was like, was not rich, he didn't have money, nothing like that. Back when he was in school, his teachers were like, you're useless, whatever. And he crawled his way up from nothing to become the king of Wall Street. He's married to Alessandra Davenport and she's just over his BS. She doesn't care. They get divorced and it's just him pining to get her back. I loved it. I ate this book up. This was in a like I said, a vlog. I don't know what you put in this book, but this book was amazing. Now, again, this is the third book in the Kings of Sin series. I did not love the first two books. 
King of Wrath I really loved but King of Pride I think was the second book I didn't like that book I'm sorry I don't know why I didn't like it but this book it really redeemed the series for me and I will be continuing but wow like I loved Alessandra. I thought that this book was so, so, so good. Next, I continued on with the Caraval series by Stephanie Garber, and I read Legendary, which is book number two. This continues Scarlet and Tella's journey with Caraval. I don't want to spoil anything because it is the second book in the series, but I ended up rating this book five stars. I love Stephanie Garber's writing. I am so deeply connected to her characters. I feel like they're so amazing and I just love everything about them. The world of Caraval and when you get Jax, you get Jax. I love Jax. If you have watched my channel before and you've watched my other videos, I, I love Jax. I love Stephanie Garber. I love her characters. I love her world. I don't have a review on this. Oh, this book is in Tella's point of view. And at first I was not happy that it was in Tella's point of view. I was a Tella hater. However, I take that back now because reading her in this book I ended up loving her a lot more because in the first book I was like and again that was a book club read I believe it was October but I could be wrong I was like you know what she's very selfish I don't really like her I don't like how she acts like she's kind of just all for herself she didn't think about Scarlet before she made these decisions however I take it all back and I really ended up loving this book also Stephanie Garber you gave an annotated section in the back reading the annotated section in the back made this book so good for me i love seeing like what could have happened or her thoughts behind it like i thought it was so 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 good i just and also i have on here i'll show you on my phone oh, let me just go get it let me grab it hold on stand by if you read this book you know about the luckless coin so when i saw this on i think it's lit joy yeah lit joy i ordered it so it is be a beauty guru for a second it is jack's luckless coin oh my god i loved it here he is with his little apple look at him and his apple and then this one with that oh my god i love it so much i was like yes i have the luckless coin do you think if i go like this with it Jax will appear because please do please do after that, I ended up reading Finale by Stephanie Garber. I finished off the series. I actually finished this one last night. However, this book only got a four star for me. It was in Scarlet and Tella's point of view, so it was dual point of view. I loved being able to follow both of them like along on their kind of separate journeys. However, Scarlet, if you did read this book, again, I do not want to spoil things because it is a series or a trilogy, whatever. I don't want to spoil anything too much by revealing too much, but you know what Scarlet was doing throughout this book, mostly in, like in the beginning. I just feel like that ended so abruptly and so short that maybe this could have been two or it should have been longer. I just feel like her mission in the beginning just was cut too short for my liking at least. I felt like it was just kind of like okay that's it but I wasn't like completely upset with it because I didn't <laughs> I didn't like one of the people involved in it again I don't it's so hard to explain without spoiling something but I didn't love this one as much as I loved Legendary and Careful however it doesn't mean that it was bad I just feel like it was missing a little bit of something for me but it was still really good and I was happy to have finished the series and now I have to go get Caraval because I store my books somewhere else and then take a cutesy little bookstagram picture by the way Let me just link that real quick. I do have a bookstagram if you want to go follow along I'm trying to be more active on there I'm posting a lot of things about my youtube channel and stuff like that So if you want to go see that link is also down below and I believe that it is in the ending part of my videos I think that I have it linked, but I will post the link down below It is also linked on my youtube channel, but it is Angie's library on instagram. So go check that one out and then finally, I ended up, I read a Kindle book. You said I was your favorite. It was Lancaster Prep Number no. 5 by Monica Murphy. I thought that this book was so cute. I rated this one four stars. Now, this one follows Arch Lancaster and Daisy. Daisy Albright is the gardener's, is he like the gardener or kind of like the landscaper? I'm pretty sure, the groundskeeper's daughter. And she's there on a scholarship because her dad works there. Arch Lancaster, again, another Lancaster boy. Normally they are like evil. 
Arch like wasn't evil. I feel like he was like a little mean in the beginning, but he wasn't actually that mean. I think he's probably my favorite Lancaster boy because of that, because he wasn't cruel. But I loved him. I love their chemistry. I like felt it. He was so, so, so sweet. I flew through this Kindle book. I couldn't put it down. I was upset. Every time I had to stop reading to go do something else, I was upset. I loved their chemistry. I love that he was just like, not a jerk. Do you know what I mean? Because I feel like every other book that Monica Murphy writes, I feel like all the guys are jerks. And I loved him. I thought it was so sweet. Oh, so good. It felt different than all of her other books. And I don't know when the publication dates of all the other ones were, but this one I believe was released in 2023. So I don't know if her writing is just changing, but I really, really, really loved it. And I flew through it. So that was a good way to end off my month. I love Monica Murphy's writing and even though those Lancaster boys are so much, they're so amazing to read about. I love the Lancaster prep series. At first when I read actually, I read it out of order. I didn't know that you there was another book before A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime so I ended up reading that one first which is technically book two but I didn't know that it was a series when I picked it up but I read that one first and then the first one. The second book and then the first one. But I'm just following along as they come out and I love the Lancaster voice and the whole series. Like, it's just so good. I love Monica Murphy. You're amazing. These were all of the books that I read in January and then two Kindle books. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books in January. And February is going to be a reading kind of month, like a, a video kind of month. So when you're looking at these books, you're going to see these books in a lot of the videos throughout February and so. So because it's such a video focused reading month on like the types of videos that I'm going to be doing, you're going to see kind of a theme here and these are going to be ones that I'm picking from. So you can see it's not really like a broad range. February, obviously we have Valentine's Day. It's a lovey type of month. So we have mostly pink covered books this month. Isn't that so cute? But I will start off with a book that is just, it's not pink, it's purple, as you can see. But it is Killer Instinct by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is book number two in the Natural series. I read The Naturals back in like, I think it was like September or so. Again, another book club read. But this is just a continuation of, is it Cassie, Casey? I think I said her name different every single time I said her name. But it's just the second book. I have the entire series. So The Naturals is book one. Killer Instinct is book number two. Book three is all in, and then Bad Blood is book number four. I am determined to finish this series this year, obviously, because I have them. And they're super quick reads that if this one really captivates me, I will jump into the next one. So if you have not read this one, if you have not read The Naturals, please skip the next section because I am going to read the back on what it is about. Friendship, romance, serial killers. The Naturals are on the case. Casey, Cassie, I don't know. Hobbs has a gift for profiling people. Her talent has landed her a spot in an elite FBI program for teens with innate crime-solving abilities and into some harrowing situations. After barely escaping a confrontation with an unbalanced killer obsessed with her mother's murder, Cassie, Casey, hopes she and the rest of the team can stick to solving cold cases from a distance. But when victims of a brutal new kill serial killer start turning up, the naturals are pulled into an active case that strikes too close to home. The killer is a perfect copycat of Dean's incarcerated father, a man whom Dean would do anything to forget. Forced deeper into a murderer's psyche than ever before, will the naturals be able to outsmart the inadic- inadjegate- inadjegate- Smart, the killer's brutal mind games, I can't read. Isn't it ironic that I cannot read properly or pronounce things properly and I have a book tube? I don't know, but this is book number two, so I really want to get to this and just continue the series, so I'm excited for this one because, again, they were super quick reads and they were easy to get through, so I'm excited. I have a video that I want to do in February, so again, with the pink themed books, but I got this one on Amazon. It is Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. It is just very... Valentine's Day e themed. I've seen some things about this, but not too many, so I'm kind of going into a blind, but I'm going to read it for you. This one is about Haley Welch. She fell hard for Julian Voss at 14 after they almost kissed in the dark vineyards of his family's winery. Ooh, cute. 
Now the prodigal hottie has returned to their small town. When Hallie is hired to revamp the gardens on the Voss estate, she wonders if she'll finally get that smooch. But the grumpy professor isn't the teenager she remembers, and their polar opposite personalities clash spectacularly. One Winefield girl's night later, Hallie can't shake the sense that she did something reckless, and then she remembers the drunken secret admirer letter she left for Julian. On sabbatical from his Ivy League job, Julian plans to write a novel, but having Hallie gardening right outside his window is the ultimate distraction. She's eccentric, chronically late, often literally covered in dirt, and so unbelievably beautiful he can't focus on anything else, until he finds an anonymous letter sent by a woman from his past. Even as Julian wonders about his admirer, he's sucked further into Haley's orbit. Like the flowers she plants all over town, Hallie is a burst of color in Julian's grayscale life. For a man who irons his socks and runs on tight schedules, her sunny, chaotic energy makes zero sense. But there's something so familiar about her, and her very presence is turning his world upside down. I'm excited for this one. I think this is going to be a super cute, like, quick read. So that's why I picked this one up, but I think it's cute. I want to do, like, cutesy reads in February. Nothing too heavy, because I feel like my January TBR, or my January reads to my February reads are so drastically different that I'm like, whoa. Next, I want to read Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. I had seen a lot about this book and then I just never ended up picking it up so I finally did. The pages are white. I feel like none of the books that I read, none of the pages are like just perfectly white and this one is so I'm like, whoa. But anyway, I love the cover. The little cartoon covers, like isn't that so cute? Oh my god, look at him. Look at him. So cute. I love it. This one is a small town sweetheart and emotionally unavailable bad boy try to find some common ground in a chemistry filled romance from Sarah Adams, author of The Chi Chi and When in Rome, which both books I think I've never read. I don't think I've read anything by Sarah Adams, so I'm excited. Annie Walker is on a quest to find her perfect match. Someone who compliments her happy, quiet life running the local flower shop in Rome. Oh, Rome, Kentucky. Sorry. But finding her dream man may be harder than Annie imagined. Everyone knows everyone in her hometown, and the dating prospects are getting fewer by the day. After she overhears her latest date saying she is so unbelievably boring, ew, rude, Annie starts to think the problem might be her. Is it too late to become flirtatious and fun like the leading ladies in her favorite romance movies? Maybe she only needs a little practice, and Annie has the perfect person in mind to be her tutor, Will Griffin. Ugh, oh, Will. Will, this sexy, tattooed, and absolutely gorgeous bodyguard is temporarily back in Rome, providing security for Amelia Rose as excitement built for upcoming marriage to Noah Walker, Annie's brother. Oh, cute. Oh, I'm gonna love this. I know I'm gonna love this. He has one personal objective while on the job. Stay away from Annie Walker and any other possible attachments to the sleepy town. But no sooner than he gets settled, Will finds himself tasked with helping Annie find the love of her life by becoming the next leading lady of Rome, Kentucky. Will wants no part in changing the sweet and lovely Annie. He knows for a fact that some stuffy, straight-laced guy won't make her happy, and he doesn't have the heart to say no. Amid steamy practice dates with and strictly educational tutoring lessons, Annie discovers there are more layers to Will than his usual stoic attitude. As the lines of their friendship become dangerously blurred, Annie reconsiders her dream guy. Maybe her love life doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be real. I'm so excited for this one. Oh my god, this is going to be so cute. Oh my god, I'm really excited for that one. Wow, I can't wait. I'm going to read that right now. Next, we have The Do-Over by Lynn Painter. This is that Groundhog Day kind of book. I have had this for a really long time. I read Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. I think it was last year, and I really enjoyed her writing, so I'm excited to get around to this. I said a while ago that I was super excited for... February because I wanted to read this book in February so I'm going to definitely do that. After living through a dumpster fire of Valentine's Day, Emily Hornsby escapes to her grandmother's house for so much needed girl talk and companionship. There, Emily passes out on the couch and when she wakes up she's back home in her bed. That's not the only shocker though, somehow it's Valentine's Day again and the next day another disaster V-Day. It seems that Emily is stuck in some sort of time loop nightmare that she can't wake up from as she rewatches her boyfriend Josh cheat on her after day after day. Ew. Josh. So those J names, as I date a J name, but anyway. Emily can't get away from the United I can why do people keep using this word? What is this word? E N I G in that I can't say it. One more time. <laughs> oh, the sound thing will go away. Enigmatic. In addition to Josh's recurring infidelity, Emily can't get away from the Enigmatic Nick, whom she seems who she keeps running into, sometimes literally in unfortunate ways. How many days can one girl spend passively watching her life go up in flames? And when something good starts to come out of these terrible days, what happens when the universe stops dueling out do-overs? I think that this is gonna be really cute. Even though I can't pronounce that word for the life of me. 
I'm excited for this one. Next. The next book is our February book club read. Now, I don't know who picked this one. I believe Sarah Caroli read this book and then one of my friends said that we should read this book. So this one is Picking Daisies on Sundays. It is a romance novel written by Liana Sin Sincati. I don't know how to say your name. I am really sorry, but look at this cover. I heard that the author actually did this cover herself. I could be wrong, but I ordered it on Amazon. I believe that she is a self-published author. Again, I I really could be wrong. However, if I'm not, good for you. This is amazing. Go you. This one, oh, the dedication in this book absolutely killed me. Are we ready? For the hopeless and hopeful romantics who don't know they're noticed in a crowded room. Adorable. And it's so, it feels so nice. And the color is so beautiful. It's so nice on your eyes. It's cute. Anyway, the book is about Daniela Daisy Maria Wanted Love. It's all she hoped for when watching endless rom-coms every Friday night. What she hadn't hoped for was to find it in her childhood best friend Levi. It was the hand-trembling, heart-thumping kind of love that wasn't supposed to happen when you saw your best friend. But it all ended when he didn't feel the same way and she vowed to never see him again. Four years later, and one night in a crowded bar in the West Village, there he was, just as perfect as ever. Maybe it was the lighting or the way his hair curled above his brow, but she couldn't say no when he asked her to be his fake girlfriend for his sister's wedding. Another chance at being his best friend and mending her immature mistakes, how was she supposed to say no? The weight of possible rejection from her dream grad school quickly became the least of her problems. With old, resurfacing feelings at every stage, romantic interaction, and stolen glance, she struggles to find confidence. She couldn't help but think that maybe she should have said no to protect her heart from a second time. That's adorable. Oh my god, I'm really excited for this one. Oh yes, this is gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I'm really excited for this one. Wow. Again, so drastically different from what I read in January that it's like... Yeah, sadness in the fantasy world. No, it's like love for February. So cute. All the pinky books. Adorable. That does bring... Oh, wait. One more thing. If you want to follow along with our book club reads, I'm going to be saying this, obviously, in every video. I have created a Fable account, so right now, if you had been with me still on there, even though I had finished the book, I have it for the entire month. So if you want to read Picking Daisies on Sundays with me and my friends, I'm going to try and be a little bit more interactive on there and put like things in the comments and each section I broke them up into three sections of the book since this is kind of a shorter one I might break this up into a little bit more however if you want to go check that out I will put that link down below so you can join along and read with us but I'm going to end this video here thank you so much for watching I'm super excited for February and I hope that I'm able to read more than what I have picked out but again because this is such a video focused month I didn't want to put too many on the list and then kind of ruin it for myself so thank you again so much for watching I really appreciate it and I will see you all next time bye <music>